everyone. So last night we started talking about early Shabbos. We don't mean Shabbos from Wednesday that you can't do. But uh, early Shabbos. Said we're going to run now this morning. Yeah, doesn't mean we can start Shabbos yet. So uh, so we spoke about as I'm in Hagia to uh, on Friday night to have the early minyan where we daven mincha and mariv before before night. Before you walk home and it's still uh, light outside, but you've already except the Shabbat. So we're asking how that works. It's one question regarding tefillah. It's going to be another question regarding Kriyat Shema, regarding Kiddush and the Suda, maybe another issue. So lots of things to talk about. But we started off talking about this question of when we can daven, when we can daven Maariv. So I mentioned last night, how again, our minhag is throughout the week to wait until nightfall to daven Maariv because we, we follow Chachamim. We said there's a machloket in the Gemara between Rabbi Yehuda and Chachamim as to when the latest time that one can daven Mincha, and conversely, the earliest time that one can daven Mariv. According to Rabbi Yehuda, you can daven Mincha only until Plag HaMincha. Plag HaMincha, by the way, where does that, what does the name mean? Plag is half. So if we take Mincha Ktana, which is nine and a half hours into the day, so there's two and a half hours left, half of the time, from the time of Mincha Ktana, Plag, half of two and a half is one and a quarter. Okay, again, we're talking about Shahad Zmaniyot, not, uh, you know, 60, 60 60 minute hours on a clock, but one and a quarter hours before the end of the day, that is the time of Plaga Mincha. So that is the cutoff. According to Rabbi Yehuda, that is the cutoff after Plaga Mincha. You've still got an hour and a quarter before Shkia, but you can no longer daven Mincha. But he says you can daven Mariv, even though it's not night yet, but that's already the time for Mariv. Chachamim come along and say, no, you can daven Mincha the whole day until, until uh, Shkia, but Mariv, you have to wait. You have to wait until nightfall. And we saw there's a later machloket as to whether when does night begin from Shkia, from Tzeta Kochavim. That's a separate, separate detail. But that's, uh, that's the idea. And then we saw the Gemara said this very interesting uh, resolution, which we don't find in many places. It says, Ma David Kamara Avid or David Kamara Avid. And you can choose. You want to follow Chachamim, that's fine. You want to follow Rabbi Yuda, that's fine. But you have to pick one. You have to follow the same. And we saw that uh, according to many of the Rishonim, what that means is you have to decide either you're going to follow Chachamim always, or you're going to follow Rabbi Yudah always, but you can't pick and choose from one day to the next. There are other Rishonim who said you can pick and choose from one day to the next, meaning yesterday I, we, uh, we davened, uh, I, I wanted to daven uh, Mincha uh, late, so I davened after Plaga Mincha. Today I want to daven Mincha early, and then so I can daven Mariv early. That's okay, so long as it's not Tauzei de Satre on the same day. If on the same day you daven Mincha after Plaga Mincha, and you daven Mariv before Shkia, right? So then that's a, that's a contradiction in terms. And we mentioned yesterday how. But no, but in that in that period, in that period around davening mincha and mariv, that's I can't. Okay, so uh, so, so so anyway, so we said that there are places, and the truth is that in Kutzlar, as I mentioned, it's quite quite it's quite prevalent. The minhag, especially in places where it gets dark very very late at night, where you find there are minyanim that daven mincha and mariv together, both after plaga mincha. It's certainly not ideal. It's not lekatchila. Mishnah Bura, the Biyar Lacha says a number of places. But it's not, it's certainly not recommended uh, as, the, as the ideal practice. And that is our practice, yeah. So we, Dava Mincha, as late into the day as we want, before Shkia, but we wait until nightfall to Dava Mariv. So clearly, we are holding like Chachamim and not like Rabbi Yudha. So if we hold like Chachamim every other day of the week, that means that Mariv, we can only Dava when it gets dark. We can't Dava Mariv before it gets dark, before Shkia, all of a sudden Shabbat comes along. We want to make early Shabbos. So we have the early minyan. So we daven mincha and then we daven mariv before it gets dark. So, so, so first of all, in order to, that we should be consistent, so we daven mincha before plaga mincha and then we daven mariv after plaga mincha, right? That's, so from that perspective, it's okay. That works according to Rabbi Yehuda. But if the rest of the time we're davening, like, we're, we're davening at the time, according to Chachamim, how can we switch? On Erev Shabbat. How is that? How is that? So the Shulchan Aruch says, the Shulchan Aruch, we saw yesterday 
When he talks about the time of Tfilat Mincha, not in the context of Shabbat, in the context of every day, when you'd have a Mincha, and he said, either, either like Rabbi Yehuda or like Chachamim, and he said the practice is to dive in Mincha all day long, and then, as late in the day as you want, and then so we hold like Chachamim, which you dive in Mariv after nightfall. So when you Shabbat, Siman Reish Samech Zayin, Dinei Tfilah Be'erev Shabbat, says the Shulchan Aruch, Makdimin Le'etpalel Alvit Yoter Bimot Achol. He says that on Shabbat, on Lel Shabbat, we Makdimin, meaning we bring Mariv forward, we dive in earlier than we would on a weekday. And he says, "Ube plag amin chay yachol adlik ulekabel Shabbat b'tfilat alvit v'lechomia." So from the time of plag amin cha, again, this is an hour and a quarter before shkia and before night, you can light candles at that point. You can accept Shabbat. Obviously, if a person want, if a person lit candles before plag amin cha, that's meaningless. That doesn't have, a, you know, that you can't accept Shabbat. That's too early. But from that time, you can accept Shabbat with tfilat alvit, and then you go home and, and you eat straight away. So. So there are those, the Tur, quotes the opinion of the Ritzkeut, is one of the Rishonim, the Magen Abraham, there's a long uh, comment of the Magen Abraham on the Shulchan Aruch. He says, don't understand. Shulchan Aruch told me that we pass like Chachamim. We have to wait until night in order to dive. But now all of a sudden you're telling me, it comes to Shabbat, uh, it comes to Shabbat, you can dive in earlier, right? We've changed, we, we, where's the consistency? We've changed our minds. So initially the Magen Abraham says, this is difficult. And then he says, actually, there's what to resolve. And he gives three reasons why there could be that the Shulchan Aruch changed over here from the weekday to Shabbat and why governing the early Shabbat should be, should be satisfactory. So reason number one, he says, is that when we come in, we daven on Friday night, we're not just davening Mariv, as the Shulchan Aruch said, we're accepting Shabbat. And there's a din of Mosefim, right, from, from, from Chon to Koresh, so that we are... When does Shabbat begin? Shabbat begins at night, before nightfall. We would say from, from Shkia, the time from Shkia until nightfall. Beinash Mashot is a time which is Safek Yom, Safek Laila. We're not sure if that time is considered day or night, but in order that we should be stringent in case it's already considered night. So certainly from Shkia, Shabbat has begun. But we have a mitzvah to even before Shkia to add on time from, to add on to Shabbat. We have it at the beginning of Shabbat, the end of Shabbat as well. So we add on. So we have to uh, begin Shabbat a little bit, a little bit earlier. So therefore, if we come along and we daven and we daven Mariv a little bit earlier, we are therefore fulfilling the mitzvah of, uh, of Tosefet Shabbat, of adding on and make by that mitzvah. So we sacrifice the fact that Yes, ordinarily we would be uh, completely consistent. Always Paskin like Chachamim. Today we have Paskin like Rabbi Yehuda for that, for, that, uh, um, for that matter. But we're fulfilling the Tosef at Shabbat and that's okay. The Magen Avram does not say as far as what you could say. You could take it one step further. And you could say that maybe from the time that you accept Shabbat, you are essentially saying now it's already night. We said every day, and this is the Yerushalmi might it comes out that it may be this way. Meaning every other day, we say, well, we can't have a marriage before night begins, right? When does, when, and I know you said it in jest earlier, but maybe, maybe, there's, uh, maybe there's what to talk about here. Meaning every other day, when does night begin? Night begins when it's night, right? But, it's a, it's a, but, but on Shabbat, it's different because if we're saying there's Tosef at Shabbat, we're saying we're adding on, we're making Shabbat begin earlier. Maybe when we make Shabbat begin already, that means that it's night for, for everything else. Okay? The, 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 the Magen Avram does not, Take it that far. That's far. That's something that you could say. You could uh, you could suggest. We have to see how far would we then take that. What happens when it comes to Kriyat Shema and so that, etc. Not so not so simple. But essentially, the Magen Abraham's argument is: you have the mitzvah of Tosefet Shabbat. You need to add on to Shabbat on Friday night, and therefore you can daven a little bit earlier. That should be okay. Reason number one. Reason number two. He says as follows: Why do we have? We, we mentioned yesterday. The Gemara Brachot says. That the three tefillot we have, Shachrit, Min, Chamariv, correspond to the different korbanot in the Beit Hamikdash, and the timing of the tefillot corresponds to the timing of the korbanot. So Shachrit is uh, uh, corresponding to the korbanat tamid uh, shalboka, like the korban tamid which is brought every morning. Mincha corresponds to the tamid shalbein harbaim. Okay, and what does Mariv correspond to? Right, so there is no specific korban that is brought then, but it's the limbs and the boots which are which are left over. They have not been consumed by the mizbeach that night. They would be brought on the mizbeach and they would be consumed. 
And that is what Mariv corresponds to that. So every other day of the week, right, that takes place at night. But when it comes to Shabbat, it's a little bit different. On Shabbat, you can bring the Korbanot of Shabbat. You can bring the Korbanot Tamid, you can bring the Korban Musaf, right? That is, a, that is Doche Shabbat, that has to be brought in its time. But the Ekter Chalavim Veivarim, the limbs of, of the Korbanot, which were brought that day and have to then be burnt on the Mizbeach, they are Korbanot of Chol, of Yom Chol. They're not brought on Shabbat. They're brought earlier. So on Friday night, they would not, they would, they would be brought already Friday afternoon during the day. And therefore, if we're saying the timing of our tefillah corresponds to the timing of the korban, it's true that the timing of Marib every other day should be after nightfall. But Dafka on Shabbat is actually earlier. So there is a room to say that on Friday it's different. And then we can, that we can uh, bring forward Marib a little bit onto the time that uh, would be still a, a daytime, before nightfall, because that corresponds to the korban when it was brought on that day in the, in the, uh, in the Beit HaMikdash. And reason number three, says the Magen of Ram, he says, maybe at the end of the day, we said that a person has to choose. Well, do you paskin halacha like Rabbi Yehuda, or do you follow Chachamim? We said, you always have to keep the same. We said, according to Tamil and Rabbeinu, Yonah and the Rosh, and many Rishonim, that means you always have to keep the same. But according to the Me'iri and the Mordechai and a number of Rishonim, it means you always have to be consistent on that particular day. So the fact that the rest of the week we pass okay, but on Friday, and again, but Seruf with the other reasons we've mentioned to say that on this day we're going to hold like Rabbi Yudah, so that would be okay. So bottom line says the Magen Ram, there is certainly room to allow this, and, and it's and it's okay to daven earlier, as the Shulchan Aruch says on on Friday night. That's if you have the early meeting. Again, the thing we have to be careful about is that we aren't doing on that day doing Tarte de Satra, meaning if you were if you were to daven. Mincha, right, early Mincha, after Plaga Mincha, followed by Mariv. So then both of them are in that period, which is between Plaga Mincha and, and, and nightfall. Then that is a contradiction in terms on that particular day. That is, that is a problem. So Mincha should be before Plaga Mincha. Mariv can be after Plaga Mincha. And even if that's not the practice the rest of the week, that is okay. That is sufficient to do on, uh, on a Shabbat and to have that early, uh, that early minute. So that is the, that's what the Shulchan Aruch says. The, the Mishnah Barah goes through. He gives the whole uh, explanation as we've just, as we've just said. But what? Yeah, meaning, meaning you should have a Mincha before Plaga Mincha. As far as the plug is concerned, you know, short shot Especially now that the start of Pesach, time at six o'clock for a good number of weeks, the plug increases with time. Comes later and later, and that's why we put it in the schedule so the women know not to light the candle before uh, the plug. That's right. That's what, that's what we said before. The candle should be lit should be lit after plug. Okay. What about? But that, that's in terms of. What about the kiddush when you finally get at home? Get home early. When do you make? We'll get to the Kiddush, maybe tomorrow. We're not going to get into the Kiddush today. But before the Kiddush, we've got to talk about Kriyat Shema. What about Kriyat Shema, right? So even if we daven, even if we daven before nightfall, right, Tfilah is Midra Banan, uh, Kriyat Shema, which is a mitzvah adoraita, every morning and every night, what is the time for Kriyat, uh, for Kriyat Shema? So the first question we can ask is, according to Rabbi Yudha, Rabbi Yudha is the one who says you can daven Mariv earlier. Did Rabbi Yudha mean to say that you can daven Mariv already from Plaga Mincha before nightfall, and that includes Kriyat Shema, and you fulfill your obligation of Kriyat Shema then? Does he mean that that's already considered night? Or does he mean to say, no, you can daven Mariv earlier, but Kriyat Shema, you would have to say again. And if Kriyat Shema, you'd have to say again, then what do we say? Does that mean you have to say it twice? You have to say it in Mariv, you have to say it again later. Yeah. So Rabbi Nutan, in the first Tosfot in Shas, Right, and the first, uh, it's a famous one because it's the first one. Right, and the first half of, first half of Brachos, uh, Rabbi Nutam says, is of the opinion that Rabbi Yudha, who said you can dive and marry early, would hold that you could fulfill the mitzvah of Kriyachma early as well. And then even if it's before nightfall, that's the time you can dive and marry. That's the time you can say Kriyachma. That is Rabbi Nutam. Rabbi Nutam is a minority opinion in this, uh, in, in this regard. Most of the other Rishonim say no. Even Rabbi Yudha was saying now, you could dive and marry earlier, Mariv, you can daven earlier, but Kriyat Shema, you have to say after nightfall. So, so our practice is, again, since Kriyat Shema, together with the Brachot, is part of Tfilat Arvit, we would still say that 
earlier, uh, you can ask, how can you say the brachot of uh, the brachot of Kriyat Shema if you're not actually fulfilling the mitzvah of Kriyat Shema then? So that's a longer discussion, but brachot, brachot of Kriyat Shema are not strictly speaking Berkat mitzvah. they're also Berkat shevach. we talk about other things as well, and we give the praise to Kadosh Baruch Hu about giving the Torah and Yitzhak Mitzrayim and, 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 and other matters as well. But that is said there, but one does not fulfill, does not fulfill the mitzvah of Kriyat Shema at that point, and we would have to go home and we'd have to, would have to repeat it again after nightfall. So that same thing, as we know, when during the period of Sefirat Omer, you cannot say Sefirat Omer before uh, it's not going to be relevant now for another year, more or less. But you can't say that uh, during the day. That has to be repeated after night uh, as well. The next question that comes up, I'll just leave with, end off with the question for now, is that there is a halacha that half an hour before the time of Kriyat Shema, half an hour before, before nightfall, so a person shouldn't engage in certain activities. You shouldn't start having a meal because we're worried that the meal may drag on and that you'll forget Right, that uh, you, you, you'll forget about saying Kriyat Shema and then uh, you won't do that. So once you get half an hour to within the obligation, that is when that, uh, that, that kicks in. So that's why when a person does early Shabbos, you come home and you have your meal straight away as early as you can, more than half an hour, that's, that's, that's still okay. But what happens if you're now getting close tonight, do you have to then wait, wait till it gets dark and then say Kriyat Shema first and then begin your meal? Or are there other ways to get around it? So we'll discuss that in a little bit more length tomorrow night. Rabbi Hanani, Rabbi Nakash, 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 Rabbi